10 cool rattlesnake facts. What makes these venomous animals one of the world's best hunters? My name is Chris and welcome to Animal Science TV. 10. 3D heat sensors. Rattlesnakes belong to a subfamily called pit vipers. I used to think that this means they live in a pit, a pit you really, really wouldn't want to fall into. But no, pit vipers are unique because they have organs called pits that look almost like a second set of nostrils. These pits detect infrared light and can sense heat from a candle 30 feet away. Rattlesnakes process this heat information in the same section of the brain used to process visual information. So they create something like a 3D heat map of their surroundings. These organs are used mainly to detect hidden, warm-blooded prey like mice. 9. Folding Fangs Rattlesnakes are venomous ambush predators, so they coil up and hide, waiting for an unlucky rodent, bird, insect, or reptile to move within striking range. They only eat once every two weeks, so they have plenty of time to sit around waiting for the right opportunity. When this snake strikes, it opens its mouth almost 180 degrees and unfolds its two hollow top fangs. These modified teeth can be up to two inches long, and the only way to fit the fangs into the mouth is for them to be attached to a rotatable part of their skull called the maxilla. Humans have a maxillary bone too, but it is fused to the skull. When the bite occurs, the snake latches on with its much smaller recurved teeth, and at the same time, jams its fangs deep inside of its victim. A lethal dose of paralyzing venom is quickly injected under pressure, like a doctor using a syringe. Rather than hanging on, rattlesnakes let the prey attempt to run away until the venom takes effect. There's no need to damage a fang while the prey thrashes around in agony, but even a broken fang can quickly be regrown. 8. Forked Tongues a rattlesnake can easily follow a dying meal's scent trail by using its tongue. It is split into two tips and grabs airborne odor chemicals from different locations at the same time. Snakes don't actually smell with their tongue and need to retract it first to get information. Once retracted, a separate organ on the roof of the mouth, called the Jacobson's organ, does the actual sensing of the odors on the two tongue tips. The Jacobson's organ can process odor gradients and allows the rattlesnake to determine which direction a smell is coming from. When the rattlesnake follows the scent trail and finally catches up to its dead or completely immobilized meal, it proceeds to eat it whole without chewing. 7. Natural Predators and Defenses Rattlesnakes themselves are sometimes eaten by large birds of prey, foxes, feral cats, and the king snake. The king snake is a non-poisonous constrictor type. It's also immune to the rattlesnake's venom. Because rattlesnakes are not apex predators, like the giant anaconda or the Burmese python, they can switch off hunting mode and turn on prey animal mode. When threatened, a rattlesnake will quietly try to slither away or hide using its camouflage. But if cornered, it starts showing defensive behavior. They use all the common snake techniques like regurgitating a meal to escape faster, coiling up, puffing, hissing, and delivering defensive bites. When rattlesnakes strike defensively though, they tend to conserve venom. They rely more upon the instant impact of pain to startle predators away. Rattlesnakes try to send the message, I see you, I'm big, noisy, and aggressive. Go find something less dangerous to eat. Please kindly inject the like button with the proper dose of neurotoxin to paralyze it, but be careful not to kill it. We forgot their coolest predator deterrent system, rattles. Rattlesnakes vibrate their tails to make a startling buzzing sound. Every time a rattlesnake sheds its skin, it adds another segment to the rattle. 
The rattle consists of dried scale rings stacked at the tip of the tail. It is brittle and can break off, so sometimes a rattlesnake might not actually even have a rattle. This noisemaker is not used to communicate with other rattlesnakes. The reason we know this is because snakes can't hear it. They lack an eardrum to detect airborne sounds. This complex rattle evolved from snakes who simply shook their tails silently. Certainly a much less startling defense. 5. Venom Cocktails Speaking of evolution, rattlesnakes are one of the newest snakes to emerge on Earth. The first rattlesnake showed up only about 14 million years ago, and according to genetic analysis, it possessed a cocktail of three venom types. This common ancestor killed its prey with a combination of hemotoxin, which destroys red blood cells and causes internal bleeding, neurotoxin, which interferes with cell signaling and causes paralysis or disrupts breathing and heart rate, and myotoxin, which destroys muscles, causes cramping and necrosis. Myotoxins can stop animals from running away, or even better, stop their diaphragm muscle from working. By using three venoms at the same time, the first rattlesnake was a great general predator. Rattlesnakes quickly spread across North, South, and Central America, diverging into several different species, species specialized to thrive in the unique environments that they found themselves in. These environments had different prey animals that were weaker to certain toxins and stronger against others. For example, hemotoxins work better in warm weather and aid in digesting larger, slow prey, while neurotoxins act faster and can paralyze a small, quick rabbit almost instantly. Today, rattlesnakes mostly are masters of just one of the three venom types. Leave me a comment, please. Um, I love hearing from you guys. Do you have any cool snake stories? And number four, jumping genes. Rattlesnakes can switch their venom type much faster than evolution normally would allow for, within just a few generations. Their venom proteins are mostly coded for on something called jumping genes. These transposable segments of DNA can move around in the genome, allowing their expression to be switched on or off. Normally, to remove a trait, evolution would work through gradual genetic mutation, resulting in permanent deletion. But rattlesnakes can save the genetic code needed to produce various venom. It can instantly turn back on in just one generation, instead of having to evolve a second time. 3. New World Snakes Rattlesnakes are native to the Americas, which is often referred to in biology as the New World. Today, there are 36 species of rattlesnakes. They are most common in the deserts of North America, but you can find them almost everywhere, from the Florida Everglades to 11,000 foot tall mountains, and the prairie rattlesnake even lives as far north as Canada. All species of rattlesnakes give live birth, which is quite rare among reptiles. Females incubate about 10 eggs internally, and upon birth, the babies all go their own different ways. She doesn't provide for them at all. However, rattlesnake dens are often multi-generational and can be hundreds of years old. So mom might see her offspring again in the den when winter rolls around. A big thank you to my new Patreon, Bianco Artistica. The support really, really helps keep me motivated as I launch this Animal Science TV project. 2. Cold-Blooded Brumation Rattlesnakes cannot control their body temperatures with metabolism. They rely on heat from the sun, air, and ground to keep them at their ideal operating temperature of 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. 95 degrees is fatal for rattlesnakes. So, on hot summer days, rattlesnakes hunt during the night. Their slitted eyes can open into wide, round pupils for better night vision than other snakes have. 
and vice versa, a 40 degree body temperature is too cold for rattlesnakes. This means rattlesnakes have to retreat to underground dens below the frost line to avoid literally freezing to death. You probably already know about hibernation, where some mammals sleep all winter long at a constant reduced body temperature. Snakes do something similar, but it's called brumation. During brumation, metabolism is reduced by 70%, but the cold-blooded rattlesnake is at the mercy of environmental temperatures. Brumation is different than hibernation because a snake can wake up on short notice if there's a hot day. Brumation works based on temperature, while hibernation is more based on a seasonal internal clock. And one, the danger to humans. Rattlesnakes can, and do, kill humans with their potent venom, but most of the time they simply choose not to inject a lethal dose. When interacting with humans, rattlesnakes are in prey mode, not predator mode. Young rattlesnakes have smaller venom glands, but can actually be more dangerous than adults because they haven't yet learned how to control venom release. 57% of bites occur to people who are intentionally handling rattlesnakes, and another 28% of attacks happen to intoxicated people. Antidotes are very effective if you can get one within 30 minutes. Otherwise, a fully loaded venomous bite could cause death within 6 to 48 hours. Rattlesnake toxins cause organ damage and might take years off of the end of your life even if you do naturally recover. So be careful, these animals are not toys. Rattlesnakes are important in balancing the ecosystem because they act as both a predator and prey animal. Practically, they keep agricultural pest populations in check and reduce disease in humans. For example, the timber rattlesnake eats mice that carry Lyme disease bacteria that could be transferred to humans by ticks. Rattlesnakes are highly specialized hunters, but they don't perceive humans as food. Scaring the crap out of us? That's their way of keeping themselves safe. You can watch more of my animal fact videos in this playlist up here somewhere. And I also do one-on-one -on -one science education videos where I attempt to explain the important science topics of today in an easy to understand way. Thank you for watching Animal Science TV.